back to the trading desk. We've got one more chart to share with you today, and uh, again, created by Jesse. And this, this one we were just discussing uh, during the break. I mean, this is about as insightful as they come, I think. This, so this is a chart I put together it. from uh, Robert Schiller's, um, he's a uh, Yale professor of economics. He wrote Irrational Exuberance, mm -hmm. book of, you know, published right around 2000 when the stock market peaked. Yeah. Just uses his data, S&P 500 earnings. You can see, I, I kind of matched him up down here, so earnings and price would be kind of matched up. And you could see back in the early 90s, price, the S&P 500 uh, price uh, just came dislocated from earnings here. And you could see the huge bubble we had here in 2000. And essentially what you're getting at here is that the S&P S&P was below what Earnings were worth at that point. They in should time. be. They should be pretty much intertwined. Be, yeah. You know, about twelve times earnings or something like that. They should be pretty much intertwined. Yeah, I'm curious if you went back on that chart. Did, did, have you ever seen spikes like this? What's interesting, I think, you know, the most interesting part is during the Great Depression after 1929, stock market crashed. Earnings went down 75 percent mm -hmm. from their peak. From this peak in 2007, earnings have gone down 92 percent. Mm. So this earnings crash is even worse than the Great Depression was. Right. Uh, which is which is saying something, and I don't think people are hearing that from from a lot of a lot of sources. So we've had this huge earnings crash. We did have a big stock market crash, but I mean, look at the disparity still there. Yeah. So still again, a as a value guy, which you are, Jesse, right. you're what you're saying now is, hey, the trade that we've seen here, right. per se, the last seven eight months was obviously to the upside, right. but there's still not value when it comes to... We're still not undervalued, and after every bear market in history, go back, I mean, this, this data goes back to the mid-1800s, right. so you have a lot of data to look at. Stocks become undervalued. You can see price below earnings here. This is the 1982 low, right. which mm -hmm. is the beginning of the last, last big bull market, biggest bull market ever, and you can see the price is way below earnings. That's, that's, that's huge value. You yeah. could have been buying any time you know, in this thing, and obviously you made a lot of money. Buying here, you know, you're basically buying high. You're still buying high, I think. Yeah, so again, today. as, a, as a, yeah. an investor, this is not a buy and hold time. No, uh, no. I mean, this is a trader's <laughs> market. Yep. And it could be, who knows when that will be, when those come to, to, you know, to a mirrored I don't think it, it could be point. a while. Because it could be five said, years, ten years, who knows? Until central banks around the world quit pumping endless amounts of money into the system. Either that, or they can, be, they, like I was saying about Japan, they can keep trying all they want, but you get to a point where banks and consumers won't borrow. Just becomes sure. muted right. as far as they the won't consumer, borrow. Yeah. And so they, you, you, you get a, a vicious cycle on the, the downside in terms of the yeah. economy. And I, I think there's a good chance we're, we're on our way to, to that know, type it, of environment. What's interesting about this is that it, it's so glaringly obvious as to the discrepancy in value relative to earnings. Right. But it just goes to show you how long these things can go on yeah. disconnected. Sure. And it's like it's like well, the old yeah, adage. It's been 20 well, years. It's been 20 exactly. years, and, and that's where I guess where I wanted to take the point was. I think you've got to take heed of this warning and say sure. I can't buy and hold my portfolio, you whatever your time frame Correct. is, and you need to be more nimble and more aggressive. I mean, you're a value guy, and. Hey, you're like, hey, we just made 60% in right. the last seven, eight months. Sure. I'm taking some money off the table. I'm yeah, paring yeah. it back. I'm leaning a little short. I'm, right. I'm kind of market neutral. And you have to and understand other... what these things mean because it's going to be like this for exactly. And you have to look at other time. asset classes because you know stocks might not be cheap. Bonds, you know, are not paying you very much. You got to look at. I think you have to look at other asset classes. And I think that's why people are flocking to gold. Yeah. I still don't think gold is a great idea right now. But. Yeah. You have to be open to other alternatives. Right. You have to be open to currencies. You have to be open to futures. Mm -hmm. You have to be open to, again, opportunistic. Short-term trading. Or yes. might even be open to just simply doing nothing. True. You know, we were talking uh, before the break, um, or during the break, a uh, report out from Goldman Sachs that I was reading this morning, and most of their, their clients on the fixed income or bond side, they're pretty much done for the year. Most mm -hmm. of their clients have had a decent <clears throat> year, and most of the guys now are just saying, I just want to ensure my gains don't get clocked yeah. from now until the year end. I can't remember in any time in the last five or ten years where people have basically said, I'm done this, you know, this right. early yeah. towards the And it was happening towards uh, mid-October even after the mid at final quarter. Because, really, you know, as we all know, it's been really quiet the last yeah, year. Sure. So, Very quiet. Sure. We need to take another break, but when we come back, we'll be doing our interview of the week. You're watching The Trading Desk on COTV Channel 11.